Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, things are a little bit different because I am doing my first ever bake with me. And ironically enough, you don't actually bake when you do this recipe, but it's such a fun recipe and I'm actually having friends over this weekend and I wanted to make this for their dessert. So today I'm gonna show you how to make chocolate mousse. And I know it sounds complicated. When I first heard about the recipe in a Sir Lad Table cooking class, I was like, this is gonna be crazy. But it's actually a lot easier if you take it slow, you don't get rushed, and you follow the instructions very carefully. So I'm gonna walk you through how to make this delicious dessert and show you some cool tips and tricks to make it a little bit more interesting. So let's run through all of the ingredients and things that you need to make this happen. First thing you're gonna need is some chocolate, and I put all of my chocolate into this large quart measuring cup because I'm going to melt it in the microwave. So you need eight ounces of chocolate and I like to use two different types of chocolate. It just makes the flavor really interesting, but you can use eight ounces of whatever chocolate you want. I use the Baker's semi-sweet baking chocolate and the German sweet chocolate. I find that having a mix of semi-sweet and sweet gives you the best flavor, but the recipe actually calls for dark chocolate. So whatever you're into, that's what you should use for your chocolate. You're gonna need some sugar, any Granulated sugar will do, some vanilla, a little bit of salt, like just a pinch of salt, some eggs, four egg yolks to be exact, and this sieve or sieve, I never know how to pronounce this thing, but you're supposed to strain something. You got some bowls, just regular mixing bowls. You got a cat on the counter because he can't just let me do my thing. Ever. He's never on the counter either. He just knows. He knows what's happening. You need 16 ounces of whipping cream for various things, so you end up dividing it for the recipe. Then you also need some toppings. So the recipe actually doesn't say what toppings you need or that you need toppings. And the first time I made this recipe at home, I didn't use any toppings and it was super delicious, but I thought since people are coming over, I'd jazz it up a little bit. So I have some raspberries, some raspberry jam, I think, or jelly, I think it's jam, that I'm gonna heat up on the stove for one type of chocolate mousse. Then of course, I have some Oreos because Oreos are gonna be so delicious on this. And I asked all my friends what flavors they want, so I'm gonna make a bunch of different types for the party. So as TARDIS continues to ruin my shot, let's talk about what to put your chocolate mousse in. At first, I've used ramekins and it's super cute and works really well, but I also think that using these kind of like so, I don't know what you would call these. Alex's mom, <laughs> Alex's mom gave us these and I just thought it would look really cute. You know that this is a professional cooking show when a cat gets his whole body all over the ingredients. Good stuff. So you can add whatever you want to the mixture that you think will be good with chocolate as a finishing touch, but we'll get into that later. So let's get into this recipe and make some delicious chocolate mousse. The first thing we're gonna do is separate the yolks from the eggs. So no one ever showed me how to do this, so I thought I'd just give you guys a little bit of a demonstration. So what you're gonna do is crack the egg and try to do this like a professional break it apart, and then move the yolk back and forth between the two halves, using the shell to kind of like break off the whites. Doesn't have to be perfect. And there you go, you have a yolk separated. I kind of broke the yolk, but it doesn't really matter. It won't destroy things. And then I'm putting them into a bowl off on the side. So I have to do that with three more eggs, and then we're going to make our sugar egg mixture. Now we're gonna take three tablespoons of granulated sugar and pour it into the yolks. The recipe calls for one eighth of a teaspoon of salt, but I'm just gonna pour a little bit in there and call it good. Then you're just gonna whisk everything together. Now we're gonna set this aside and melt us some chocolate. So I'm gonna take this chocolate and put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds on and off until all of the chocolate is melted. So I heat my chocolate until just about melted so I don't overcook it. And then as it's sitting here, the warmer chocolate around the big chunks will melt it as it cools off. 
So now we're over at the stove top and we're gonna take three quarters of a cup of heavy whipping cream and just heat it up to a simmer. I'm using my favorite reindeer spatula. It's like the best spatula I've ever had. And I kind of like the fact that it has reindeer on it because it's quirky most of the year. I like to heat this gradually. So I have it on medium to low heat and I just keep moving my spatula around to make sure nothing's burning. I take this part and the next part very seriously because that's where you can get curdled ling and basically make scrambled eggs so you have to be very very careful so now that we have a light simmer i'm going to turn the stove off and pour it into the egg mixture that we made earlier stirring as quickly as i can with the whisk and creating a very steady stream Gonna whisk it for a little bit longer just to make sure everything is combined and then we're gonna put it back in the saucepan on the stove. I'm gonna turn it down to very low heat because at this point you wanna be as careful as you possibly can with this mixture. So you just wanna to continue to stir for about five minutes or until it coats the back of your spoon or until a small thermometer like this one tells you that the mixture is 160 degrees. You wanna make sure you're getting all of the sides scraped and nothing is sitting on the surfaces too long or you're gonna get eggs. If you do find that you're getting a couple of lumps, that's totally okay. We're going to get those out of the mixture when we put it through the sieve into our container. It should be getting thicker though. You want it to look kind of like a custard that you would find in a donut because you know, donuts are always on my mind. So now that I've finished the custard, I wanted to show you guys exactly what I meant by coating the back of the spoon. It is obviously back there, it's thick, but it doesn't look like this. You don't want like, it looks like scrambled eggs. That's not what you want. You want a nice cream like consistency. If there are a little bit of chunks, you can kind of see a little bit of texture in there. That's why we do this next step where you strain it into a container. You wanna move your spoon around and push down any of the custard that's just not budging, but you can see some of the little white stuff that comes off of eggs. I don't know what it's called, but there's some of that stuff in there. You don't want that in your chocolate mousse. So now you're gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. Stir that in and add in your chocolate. You wanna whisk it all together and get a little aggressive because at this point your chocolate will be pretty cool and your custard should be warm enough that it shouldn't be too much of a difficulty but you wanna make sure that everything gets blended together nicely and then you're gonna set this off to the side to cool completely. Now we're gonna make the whipped cream and I have about a cup and a quarter or so, whatever was left from my containers into this large bowl. If you have a KitchenAid mixer, this would be a great time to use it, but I have my grandma's really old looking hand mixer that I'm gonna use. So you wanna put your beaters into the heavy cream and whip as fast as you possibly can on the highest setting once you get going for about three to five minutes or until soft peaks form. And I'll show you what that means after I get there where I can show you. So once you've whipped it for a while, you wanna take one of your beaters, it still can be attached, but it's just easier to show you guys when it's not. And you wanna swirl it around and lift it up and look at this little pointy part to see how much it curls. If it curls all the way down into a nice little ringlet, it is a, let's do this, let's see here. It is a soft peak. This is kind of a medium to hard peak. That's totally fine. I actually like my whipped cream a little bit more whipped than a soft peak. So we are all set. 
All right, now it is time to officially make the chocolate mousse. So what you're gonna do is take about a third of your whipped cream mixture and more or less sacrifice it to the chocolate. You're trying to create a light and fluffy mousse-like texture, but you have to get the chocolate kind of like assimilated to the cream. So the first third that you put into it is basically gonna flatten out into nothing. The folding method is really important for this recipe. You wanna just fold it super lightly and make sure that there's air staying in the mixture. Once it's almost completely blended, add in another third of your whipped cream. Once you add in the last third of the cream, you wanna make sure everything is blended and there aren't any obvious white sections or discolorations. So keep folding, keep making sure everything is light and fluffy, and soon you'll have some seriously delicious chocolate mousse. It does take a while to fold, so don't get discouraged if you keep finding little white streaks. You'll get there shortly. All right, now that our chocolate mousse is folded, we're gonna divide it into their separate containers. So for this part, you can just slab it all in there if you want, but I really like to make sure that they look even and smooth. So I'm just gonna take a tablespoon, but you can use just a regular spoon if you want to. And then get a little bit in there and keep filling it up so it's not going everywhere and making the sides really messy. All right, now we're gonna take this and chill it in the fridge for about an hour and then add all of the garnishes. There you have it, a super easy chocolate mousse recipe that your friends and family are gonna freak over. They're gonna think you're so good at baking because you are and because you didn't actually bake. But that's gonna be it for today's video. If you wanna see more baking videos, give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Don't need no eggs.